There's two things in this world that I hate. Well, first of all, first of all, first of all, I started this video with a lie. There's a lot more than two things in this world that I hate. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to talk about two things that I hate quite a bit. Communists and motherfuckers that overprice their properties when they're selling them. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise. I fucking hate communists, and I fucking hate sellers that overprice their properties. And you know what I'm doing today? I'm helping a dude named Levin. He's an investor from Los Angeles, California, and he fucking hates communists, too. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes in this show, I get a little carried away, and I make fun of California and how California is super communist. Shit like that, right? Because... In the United States of America, California is the closest thing to fucking communism that I've ever seen. New York might be a close second, maybe Portland. Uh, I I've heard like all of Oregon's kind of horrible like that, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. Speaking of which, uh, I call Oregon, Oregon. Uh, we made a video. Uh, we'll go ahead and link that in the show notes below. Guy put the Guys, put the thumbnail up here somewhere. Uh, this is a pretty funny thumbnail, a little Karl Marx action. Anywho, so we made this video. Uh, talking about Portland and whatnot, and I made a couple jabs at uh, Oregon, and uh, you guys should check out the comments, like, tons and tons of comments of people that live in Oregon who are really mad that apparently I mispronounced uh, Oregon. Nobody really cared that I basically called it a communist piece of crap uh, city that's government just, like, steals money and rights from American citizens. Nobody cared about that, but they were very upset that I apparently mispronounced Oregon. Sorry about that. My fucking bad. Anyway, where I was going before I got off track, my dude Levin, Levon, sorry, brother, my dude Levon, don't, I, I apologize, don't treat me like the people from Oregon, bro, <laughs> don't do it. My dude Levon, he, I'm going to call you Lev, Lev for sure, my guy Lev, right, Lev. My guy Lev is currently in L.A. Lev actually was born in the Soviet Union in the 80s and actually lived through some communism, right? And he, he wanted me to know that, and he wanted me to know that fucking communism sucks, folks. Somebody who's actually dealt with real live, real goddamn commies is like, peace, I'm out, I'm going to America, that shit sucks, right? So we got that in common, brother. I like you, I think you like my style, I like your style, and we both hate commies together, right? Another thing. Another thing that I really, 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 really hate, Lev, it's sellers. Sellers in the Cleveland market that try to overprice their properties. Now, what's cool about today's uh, video is we have a seller who's savvy enough, savvy enough, Lev, not to overprice their property. As a matter of fact, they did something so savvy, they reduced the price of their property to make it appear to be an even hotter deal in an effort to get a bunch of buyers to fight each other and possibly, possibly pay more than what they should just because they're fighting each other over the opportunity to win this bid, right? So, because I like you, Lev, and because it's what you paid me to do. That's my fucking job, right? That's how this show works. You guys pay me money, and it's my job to find you investment properties that make sense and then give you the exact... Uh, metrics of like how the deal is going to work, how much you should pay, how much you shouldn't pay, things of that nature. Right? It's my job. That's that's how I make a living, obviously. Uh, so of course I will do that for you, because again, that's what you paid me to do. If I didn't do that, I guess the show wouldn't be on very much longer, right? Uh, so I'm going to do it for that reason. Second reason, uh, I like you. I like your style. I'm going to go into the price I think you should pay, and how and why. There's going to be this bidding war. What I think other buyers are going to do in this bidding war. How we could beat their bid without overpaying like I think some of them will. And then just, you know, more of my thoughts on why it's so much smarter as a seller to price your property low than high. We'll do all that right after this. Hi, I'm here for an interview. Hold my TV. Yep, take a seat with the other applicants. Thank you. 
Welcome back, folks. Can you buy the property? That is the question, right? Because this, this is set up almost like an auction. It's set up like a bidding war, right? I know sometimes investors out there, they see a property that's, oh, it must be an amazing deal, and they think that people don't know what's going on. No, no, no. Look, here's the deal. Every day of the week, this is probably like a $100,000 duplex, okay? But they listed it at seventy five k, right? Three days on the market, and buyers are going to be fighting each other like cats and dogs, right? And the listing agent, the seller, they did it on purpose, okay? They know that it's worth a lot more than seventy five k. This is what they said uh, in their description, okay? Asking price is recommended starting bid. Beautiful opportunity to add or start your investment portfolio. Uh, first time buyers, this home is perfect for living in one unit while paying the entire house payment off with just your rental income. This home has been lovingly cared for and very well maintained, uh, with the current owners, 50 years of ownership, brand new roof, gutters, and commercial grade downspouts, forced air, gas, heat, two units each, 1,069 square feet each with a large living room and Fox fireplace, formal dining kitchen, full bath. Plus linen built-ins, beautiful hardwood floors throughout beneath the carpet, crown molding, wood banisters, leaded glass built-ins, ah, blah, blah, blah. This is fucking talking about. None of that fucking matters. Look, here's the deal. All right. It's a solid, solid house, okay? And it's built just like every other duplex in uh, the Cleveland area like this, okay? We literally have freaking hundreds and hundreds of duplexes built exactly the same way. Like all the fancy built-ins and stuff they were talking about, like these are like in all the duplexes basically like this dining room thing if you watch my show for any amount of time like pretty much every like old brooklyn cleveland area duplex has one of these okay it's a nice it's a nice property and usually it sells for like a hundred grand okay is it worth exactly a hundred grand today maybe 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 I don't know if I want you to buy it for a hundred grand. Maybe somebody else will, and if they do, good for them. I think they may have slightly overpaid. Because here's the thing, right? The kitchens, the kitchens are dated. Like, dude, this kitchen is like right out of like the '80s here, okay? And the other kitchen is the same. Like, it, it, it just doesn't. It's just too dated, right? They haven't updated it. Where the heck is that other kitchen, right? Here's the other one. The other one looks even worse. There's actually carpet in it, okay? So. The kitchens are incredibly dated. And here's the thing with these old Brooklyn duplexes. We can easily, easily rent these out for $750. And they're long-term friggin' earners. But we got kitchens and baths in this particular unit uh, that, that are coming right to us from the 1980s, okay? And we don't have tenants in them, right? Because it was owner-occupied for 50 years, right? So sometimes, like what we run into, right? You run into a duplex like this where it has already got, like, long-term tenants in there. And they still have dated kitchens and stuff, but there's already people in there paying rent. Uh, so people buy them for, like, 100 grand. Boom, just like that, no problem, right? And then when those tenants eventually move out, you got to do a unit turn, okay? You want to repaint it, bring it up to fresh standards, Home Depot quality, cabinetry, finishes, whatever, kitchen and the bath, right? And then you get your easy, easy, easy 750 in rent, right? Here we're getting an empty property, uh, but nobody's paying 750 uh, for those, like, 1980s kitchens, bro. At least nobody qualified, right? Like, you might get tenants uh, that, you know, can't really get a unit anywhere else. Maybe they have subpar credit, this or that, and that's not what you want to do. You miss out on some money. So I think it makes sense to put about 20 Gs into it, but it's not going to be like a burr, right? It's not going to, like, it's not going to add, like, equity to your deal right you're just you got to do it to get tenants in there right so with that said i don't know if you want to pay uh a hundred for it i could possibly see somebody else paying a hundred for it i'd probably put my bid in at 85 ten thousand dollars more than what they're asking i think 85 would be what i'd be comfortable doing and then i'd put 20 g's into it bring those kitchens up to 2021 right so we have an all-in investment of 105 grand then we got two units bringing in 15 hundo total, right? 18 G's for the year. It's a cash flow cow, right? After your fixed and variable expense estimates, you're bringing in about 8,500 with your $105,000 investment. It's a 17% cash on cash return estimate. If what you would do is what I would do, I would just buy it cash, right? Buy it cash for 85K for two reasons. Reason number one, 
I want to try to beat all the other buyers that are going to be investing in this, right? Because it's going to be a bunch of buyers, right? They they purposely priced it low to get above list price offers from a ton of people. It's a pretty good real estate investing strategy, to be honest with you. If you're selling, it's a great way to get buyers involved in a bidding war. And then sometimes when buyers get involved in a bidding war, I don't know, like testosterone or like wanting to win somehow takes over. And sometimes people actually uh, pay more, right? As a real estate broker who sold 200 fucking million dollars worth of real estate, I constantly on a daily basis when I talk to people that are trying to hire me to sell their properties, I have to beat these motherfuckers down. Like, Dad James, the property's worth 120. No, motherfucker, it's not. Your shit is worth like fucking 100. Dad, well, let's list it at 120 anyway and see what happens. No, motherfucker, that's fucking stupid. You know who does that? Fucking stupid people who don't fucking sell $200 million worth of real estate like I fucking do. Your name is Bob and you're a mechanic. You fix cars. I fucking sell real estate, Bob. Which fucking one of us has made millions of dollars selling real estate? We're going to list it low, not fucking high. If you know better than me, why are you working as a mechanic instead of selling $200 million worth of real estate because you make more money selling $200 million worth of real estate than being a mechanic, Bob? Fuck! If you list it high, you're going to eventually get lower than what we would have sold it for if we listed it low because it's going to sit on the market for an extended period of time and then people are going to think something's wrong with it. Whereas if we list it low, it's going to be a multiple offer situation and then people get testosterone and they fight each other and sometimes they overpay. So anyway, sometimes I have that conversation with people uh, that don't know what they're doing, right? And they try to list these properties too high, okay? And like I said, they end up with less money, right? So these people are savvy, right? Don't think they're listing it at 75 k because they don't know what they're doing, right? They're trying to get people excited. But I don't want you to get super excited. I don't want you to get caught up in that, like, multiple offer bidding frenzy and pay the 100 right? Because you still got to drop... 20k into it immediately right and to be honest with you you don't have to pay one hundred and twenty thousand dollars to get fifteen hundred dollars rent in cleveland right now you just don't right so that's why i'm at there i'm at uh the 85 okay i'm at the 85 in in an effort to make our 85 look better than somebody who maybe comes in a little bit higher than we do because they got all that testosterone because they didn't overprice it like that fucking asshole Bob, okay, who is representative of like, I don't know, 25 to 30 people a week that call my company who are just idiots. But anyway, because we don't want uh, to have to overpay like, uh, those folks, right, who may be financing it, we want to put in a cash offer. It makes our lower number appear to be a stronger offer. So they may jump on that. And then the second reason, the second reason that you want to uh, go with a cash offer, in my opinion, is because you can easily pick it up at 85 put in your 20 Gs to get it rent ready, ready to go, and then just refinance it when you're done. And I believe the bank will, you know, give it a solid appraisal at like 105, right? Again, it's not a burr. I don't think you're adding equity here. Uh, but if you do it that way, it allows you to pull, you know, as much of your money out as possible, right? So instead of having to do your down payment and then front $20,000 of out-of-pocket repairs, instead, if you do it that way, you buy it cash, you, you do the repairs, then you refi it later, you really only have to front 25% of the repairs, right? So instead of having to kick in 20, right, you're only kicking in five out of pocket. So it allows you to get an extra $15,000 of liquidity now. Plus, again, I believe that it makes us stand out from some of the other offers. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.